All right, so we get it down here. Using our plastic panel removal tool again, just tuck it. Somehow, you get it all down here. And now all of our cables are in the kick panel. Now, of course, we need to get the cable up to our iPod or for doing our Sirius module. The Sirius module, wherever we have installed it, usually up in the same area. Um, you'll plug the Sirius cable into here and then from the Sirius module, the antenna. I usually put the antenna right up here on the dash. So keep everything in this general vicinity just to minimize the install time and maximize uh, your afternoon or evening. Uh, so with this guy, everything kind of where we need it to be. Um, we're going to explore where the module is going to live and how we're going to get these cables routed. So I don't know if you guys can see from up there. There's a little plastic piece down here. Really simple. It's actually just attached by fasteners. So just pull down. Let's see if you can see. You guys see? You guys see what I'm talking about? So it's kind of this one. Actually, you know what? These pull forward. That's right. It's an E3. This pulls forward a little bit and then. Cable, this little piece slides straight out. And that gives us access to some room up here. There's places, there's a little spot up here. Actually, it's a great place for the module. You can see the module will just kind of fit nicely right there. Now you want to use a little bit of double-sided tape or something like that, but there's tons of room up there. Um, now, that part being done, we can see here, there should be a Phillips head screw holding this panel, and this particular car is missing it. There's just a brass Phillips head screw usually that's right here. We want to get this out because this lets us get cables into the console where we want to be. So let's pretend we're removing that kick screw. This comes out, it then slides. Actually, I think this one slide, slides to the rear. Yep. You can see there are a couple little tabs. So once the screw is removed, you pull out, push back. The panel is removed, and now you see we've just got tons and tons of room back here for not only our module, well, the media bridge module is a little bit bigger. You could still probably wedge it back there. But most importantly, it gives us access into the center console where we can install our spec dock, or if you're not installing a spec dock, you can take the included cable with your media bridge. Again, you'll want to run the female end up into the console because that is where your cables will plug in. So you've got tons of room to just come up in here, and some guys get creative and take the lighter out and bring stuff through there, or. You know these useless cup holders in our E39s, they don't even work. So you can see you can bring the cables down through there. There's all kinds of neat routing options, um, but that will let us get there. So let's kind of pause right here since we've identified the major disassembly parts of the passenger footwell. You guys are smart. You can use your brains and figure out exactly how you want to mount the module or where you want to mount it. You can't do it wrong. Just plug the stuff in and enjoy it. So. Um, let's pause here. We're going to kind of come back with the uh, spec dock um, ashtray installation, which is a really cool feature. Uh, so we'll see you guys momentarily for that. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and tackle our center console removal so that we can install the spec dock here in our E39s. Very straightforward process. It looks kind of complicated. You'll see in a couple minutes it's not. We need to start back here, actually, in the back seat. There's a little pocket underneath your vents here. You'll see it right here on the side. So we just take our panel removal tool, get it on the side, pry out that pocket, You'll probably get the other half with your hands, easy enough. Slide the vents down. It's going to reveal a couple of Phillips head screws. We take those guys out. Then we take our console and lift it out of the way completely. Now this car, you know, it's got one of those old school phone systems in it. So we're going to move it out of the way by disconnecting it like so. You won't need to reconnect this in the end anyway, unless you're using your old school phone system. If you are, it's pretty interesting. Um, you can see that, rev that reveals two screws, one here and one here, which we need to remove. You can just put all your screws back here on the transmission hump. Plenty of room. All right, so with those guys out, we've got two more screws that we need to address, and they're up here. Actually, they're up here in the front. So it's a little bit easier in a stick ship. So you M5 guys will have a little bit easier go of this. We first remove the boot, and then we take our fingers, and we remove the gear selector. 
you can see that reveals a couple of screws, one up here and one up here. guy out of the way. Oh, well, looks like I'm going fishing for that one. So don't drop your screws down in there because we'll then have to go get them. So once we've removed our gear shift selector panel, we're going to take our pinky finger or whatever fingers you can get back in there and pop up the hazard switch. And that's going to, it will be plugged in. I've already taken it out. Underneath there will be one more Phillips head screw so that we've got one, two, three, four, five screws securing the entire center console. So we'll get this screw out. We'll come get the panel. Let's get this screw out, no problem. All right, so we get that screw out of the way. Now we can take the whole console out. And again, we'll kind of start by using our fingers, being very, very firm, but gentle. There's a couple of plugs, disconnect that and we start lifting out the console. Now this console's clearly been out before. Um, this, sometimes this switch here is attached to the plastic here. And again, you can just easily remove it. It's not complicated. Unplug your locks as well. I mean, all these things we just literally unplug. These all just snap out. This gives you a good time to clean all the schmutz out of here too. So um, now that we've got the console out of the car, why don't we head on over to the workspace and we'll get the spec dock installed and finish up this install. All right, guys, so here we are on the bench. I've actually already installed the spec dock. We had some audio issues before, so uh, we can't go back now because it's already uh, been done perfectly. So all we've done, essentially, is we took out the factory ashtray, which is easy enough to do. And then from the back side, all we did is we took our drill with a drill bit, and we just drilled a little hole. Very straightforward. You drill right in the center of this little chart here. See, like, a bunch of little NR numbers and such? right in the dead center towards the front. You can see right where this hole is. That's where you're gonna drill a hole large enough for this to come through. And so after you've drilled the hole, of course you'll feed the cable down, pull it through. You'll take off the adhesive from the back of the spec dock, pressure fit the spec dock in, the adhesive will take hold, and we're done with the spec dock install. I mean, on, honestly, it's, it's just a couple of minutes, I, I assure you. Um, and that's the finished product. Again, it's that straightforward. So we've got the cable coming out of the bottom. So now we just take this back to the car, route the cable through, and proceed to enjoy our spec dock and dice. Okay, so we're back in the car. We've installed the spec dock. Super straightforward getting all this back together. Take the console, push out on it. There's a ton of room. Take the cable, just tuck it on through, pull it on up to the front. Again, we're taking care here not to scratch anything. Um, let's go ahead and get our light plugged back in. That's the pretty light that goes around the outside of the spec dock. Don't forget that. It's just too cool. All right, so we'll get this guy here, start feeding stuff back up through here, get all of our plugs reconnected, get your power cord reconnected back down here. Again, it's pretty straightforward stuff. So it's a good thing these cars are so well built. Makes our jobs a lot easier. I have a couple audio issues, so if you guys can't hear me, turn the volume up. All right, so we'll get our lock up through there, our lights up through there. And now, get this situated like so. Get everything back in place. Snap our console in. Make sure it's all nice and flush up here. There we go, beautiful. Snap this. Of course, we'll put our screws back in. We've got, we've got a couple more things to do to this car, but of course, you would just put it back together like so. Snap in your lights, snap in your locks, screw the screw down, screw these guys, and then just follow the rest of the process on the back side. We just wanted to show you guys how to get everything back together. So guys, here's the finished look. We've got the spec dock completely installed in our E39. So at this point, we would make all of our connections here in the footwell with our either spec dock or cable or whatever the case may be, our power module for the dice, uh, our power plug rather for the dice and at the very end we're going to still need to head back to the trunk plug in our three pin connection and that way we can fire up and test everything and again the, the new systems are compatible with the iphone 4 all current generation ipods eye touches uh, anything back to i think the original ipod is completely compatible with these systems so again thanks again for joining us and we'll see you in the future in our next video